Greetings and salutations, Geo Nerds. Here we are today up at White Rock near Ipswich. Uh, John from Gel Builder just did an amazing video of this area. You must go and watch it over on his channel. I'm going to show you bits of it here, but there's a lot more of it, and it's way fantastic. So, great geology. Uh, let's have a look at it. So, hey, John. Hey, John. Wait for me. Let's, let's rock. rock. There she is, White, White Rock. Rock. On this uh, northern face, you can see all these caves here, here, here. Yeah, what an amazing formation. Just a quick pause here, folks, to show you the difference between this hard sandstone John's climbing on here and this soft stuff that's down the bottom. So far, the crumble bar. Let's go on. Another quick pause, this is a fault that runs right through the rock, back to front, right through it. If you look around the front side, some of the other shots you'll see him. John's about to climb up. Well, folks, here we are today over the city. Oh, well, a Gavin, really. Let's have a look. Oh, there's the uh, new Olympic Stadium. Maybe one day. New railway station. Maybe one day. Hey, Kabuka Park. South Brisbane going past. There's the magnificent Wheel of Brisbane. No, it's not. It's a pathetic Wheel of Brisbane. Anyway, we're going to get going. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do 27 kilometres in five seconds, which is about Mach 19. So we just broke every window in South East Queensland. There's White Rock down there, there's the ridge that leads up to it, but not much to see from the um, Google uh, um, metadata. But you get an idea of the lay of the land and where it is, and we'll just pull back up here so you can see how close this is to Brisbane. There's a the CBD. Don't think you do this one on public transport, but yeah, you probably could. Train to Springfield, bit of a walk, but you could do it. Anyway, let's have a look at the geology up this way, because it is really interesting. Well, folks, here we are having a little uh, 3D fly around. You can see White Rock in the middle there. The ridge parallel to that at the back is called Gunpit Ridge. And uh, there's a reason for that, and we'll find out a little later. 
So this is a very folded country. I'll put the LiDAR up in a minute and you'll see it is. <clears throat> and it is because it's a very heavily eroded sedimentary plain, but it's also faulted. It's been hit with earthquakes. It's cracked to hell. So here's the uh, LiDAR and you can see I'll put the geology on it. Well, there's a few different rock types, but mostly it's sandstone and the same stuff that the Ipswich coal deposits are made out of. We'll go to 2D for a minute here. So that nice green in the middle, the light green, is the rock we're talking about. Um, it's Triassic in age, so 220 million years. The uh, dark green one is the same age, but a slightly different rock type. They all contain the same rocks, sedimentary rocks, coal, shales, sandstones, all that sort of stuff. Those two red deposits are much later, 100 million years later. Can you believe they are um, uh, rhyolite intrusions? And the little brown one at the top there is a little basalt intrusion, also uh, about 100 million years later. I'd actually like to go and have a look at that one day. So, John, if you're listening, we might uh, see if we can track out there and smack some rocks at some stage. Anyway, I'm not sure where it is yet. I'll, I'll do it at planning. And you might see a grey dotted line down one of those valleys. That's a fault. A geologic fault runs right through Ipswich, too. So, yeah, yeah it's a very interesting area. And uh, it's. Uh, Let's have a look at a little more. So here we have uh, the Triassic and uh, Australia's right down the bottom here. I'll put a ring around it for you. And um, yeah, so the world was a different place because it was 240, a quarter of a billion years ago. But there was life here. There were land animals. One thing you think about Jurassic Park, almost none of the dinosaurs in there are actually Jurassic. They're all quite a bit older. So uh, some of the life that was around at that stage, there was this fella here into the eye, I could swear I was in the air force with that bloke, but anyway, he's uh, this fella, and uh, obviously if you're going to have nice big tasty things like that, you're going to have something to eat them, so there'll be these guys running around as well, they were in Jurassic Park, and well, they're Triassic dinosaurs, anyway, not to worry, so if you go out to Ipswich, on the side of the road, you'll see these things, cuttings, I love cuttings, you could read them like a book, now you can see this is actually not very far from White Rock, and you can see there's a fault running right through the middle of it, where it's all been folded in moves. Oh, I bet that fault is the one on that map. Anyway, let's have a look. So why is white rock there? Why isn't it just a valley? Well, you have these things, anticlines and synclines, basically bendy up, bendy down. And when you bendy, the rocks on the inside get crushed. They get compressed and they become harder. And the rocks on the outside get stretched and they become softer. So you will see all the time around the world where sedimentary rocks, which are all laid down parallel, and you can see this is at White Rock. This is not parallel. They've been twisted to hell because of the faulting and the and, the, and they'll be all different hardnesses. But if you look at the rock itself, up the top there, that dark stuff, and you saw when John was climbing it, it was hard. And that other stuff that he put his hand on was just crumbling away like a, like a violet crumble bar. So yeah, there's a big difference. There is different chemistries, but it, a lot of it is caused by post folding. And here's a beautiful example at White Rock. You see these have been bent right around in a, in a big uh, syncline in this case. And uh, as you can see, the rock itself, that light stuff underneath is very soft and the stuff up top is very hard. And it's protecting the rock underneath, which is why it's still there. If people didn't keep carving their names into it. But you might have seen John looking at this sign you know, do not handle any suspicious items because this was a firing range. The Americans were here using this for um, firing in the 1930s and 40s. And here's their base down at Red Bank. And uh, there's quite a lot of variety in this, but we looked at before at a place called Gun Pit Ridge. Well, because on that ridge, there are gun pits, strangely enough. And here's one of, this is the worst photo I've ever used. I really did try the AI, I tried to enhance it, but it's just a hole in the ground line with rocks. It's still up there, go and have a look. But you might know what these awesome things are with those heroes. See, not all heroes wear high vests. Some of them have to wear low vests in it. This is the Australian Bushmaster. Awesome, awesome bit of gear. And it's made here at a place called Rhine Metal at Red Bank. And of course, as the world turns, the coincidence of all is Here's the factory. It's right in the middle of the old military base. There you go. Anyway, uh, I think that's about it for White Rock.
Well, okay, folks. Back on the track again. If you believe that, you believe anything. White Rock, very interesting place. Uh, worth a visit. You don't need to be super fit like John to go there. Um, check out John's videos, Gel Builder. He's got a channel called Gel Reviews, which is awesome. And he's got another channel called Off Track Explorer. All full of great videos. Please check them out. Links are in the description. They always are. Anyway, till next time, keep, keep rocking. T-Rock's out. out.